It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Atlanta Falcons. And it comes your way next. First open in 2017, there's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one in the NFC, as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Brandon Gunn joined in the booth by Charles Davis. Uh, CD, these Falcons seem to be in an interesting spot coming into 2023. They've seemingly got playmakers galore on offense, but they may only be as good as what their defense can do for them. And that defense... 27th overall in the league last year so they must improve in order to help them though they're going to try and control the ball more on the offensive side try and run it a little bit more and take some time off the clock meanwhile for the visiting vikings we know all about the skilled players on offense but they're looking to make up some ground on the defensive side of the ball this season as they were second from the bottom in total defense a year ago what they want to do is find a way to be more consistent on that side of the ball and not rely on making big plays late in games in order to secure victories. They want to be able to stop people earlier. That's what they're looking to do in 2023. Florida Atlantic man Greg Joseph ready to get this one started and we are underway from Atlanta and they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Falcons ready to go to work here on offense and at the helm in his second season Charles it's Desmond Ritter. The Falcons got their feet wet with Ritter during a four game audition last season and he did end their year with a pair of wins optimism reigns that he is their quarterback of the future. Here's the eighth overall pick from Texas. It's B. John Robinson. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Atlanta. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way. Work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner? Safety? Linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. First down. Here's Ritter. Kaderil Hodge has it complete. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. So eight yards on the completion there. And they'll be left with second and a couple. On the counter, this is Robinson. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you. And sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. They did tell us they wanted to establish the ground game early, didn't they? They did, and a small sample size that we've seen so far, but pretty good return. Yeah, you got to like that. They've strung together a couple of first downs, established what they wanted, the running game. And guess what? They also got their lead guy running it pretty well, too. Meanwhile, Ritter's throw into the hands of Pitts here. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, 
You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Second down and a run by Robinson. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Ritter throwing on third down. They'll get this into the hands of Hodge. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. How about that? One of the so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Well, this has been a good march down the field, but now they're stuck looking at a second and 14. On play action, here's Ritter. Well, it's caught on the right side of Smith. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it brings up third and five now. And coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Ritter now. And that will be incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Nice job there, forcing that incompletion. This is going to be a fun battle throughout this game, watching him try to take away that area of the field. Koo knocks this one through the post, and the Falcons are out to a 3 nothing advantage. No touchdown there, but if that first drive is any indication, looks like they're going to have a pretty good day passing the football. I would say confidence would have to be pretty high after that first drive, able to throw it almost at will. You're exactly right. They didn't get the touchdown, but three points serves as a nice notice about how this offense is going to move. This one away. And he will make it to the 20 yard line and no further. So here are the Vikings set to go to work, and they're led by the leading passer in the NFC a season ago. Now in his 12th year, sixth as a Viking, Kirk Cousins. Minnesota's new coaching staff really leaned on Cousins for leadership and production, and the longtime vet was up to the pressure. 29 touchdowns, 4,500 yards, and a 13-win season. His best as a starter. Captain Kirk, he's quietly been one of the league's most productive passers the last few seasons. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at the 20. They'll start on the ground with Madison, and he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. On play action, Cousins. first quarter three nothing after one on EA Sports the Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a third down coming up
So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. On third down, Cousins. And that went to the right side and incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dive defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed. Unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And it will be Falcon football. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. They begin the drive with Robinson, and he'll be taken down at about the 45. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Now a second and six. Again, it's Robinson. Gets past one man. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. Well, hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. The Falcons on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Robinson gets the toss on the right side. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Six yards in the wrong direction that time. Not only that, but it brings up fourth. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing up fourth down. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Brandon Powell, deep for Minnesota. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And they will begin with, should we call it, far from ideal starting field position, their own two-yard line. So what's your definition of ideal? The one-yard line on the other side of the field. Yes, exactly right. So yes, your definition is apropos in this case. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And that run, that changes the whole mentality about the drive right there. They were starting on their own two-yard line. They just wanted enough space to pump the football successfully. Now they're talking about putting together a drive. Meanwhile, Cousins throw taken in by Hawkinson here. And he'll be out of bounds right around the 14. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Off the play fake, Cousins. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Osborne. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. Brings up second down. Running from the shotgun with Madison. There's a nice move. 
And this will be a Vikings first down as he'll get this up to the 25. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Second quarter, two minutes remain. Three nothing, our score. Cousins on first down. Into the hands of the rookie, Jordan Addison. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the 32-yard line. Cousins trying to get his guys up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Second and three. That is into the hands of Hawkinson downfield. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. Let's just call it as we just saw it right there, a breakdown defensively. Seems like no one went with the tight end, and no one really did. Had all sorts of space in the middle of the field. Yeah, everyone else was covered, but he was not. Big play results. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Throwing Cousins. And that would off the mark behind him. Incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Now a second and 10. Cousins again. They'll get this underneath to Madison. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. Cousins. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they will have a first down as they are definitely in field goal range now, down at the 20-yard line. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and 10. From the red zone now, Cousins. Looking for Addison again, and he's got him again. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Just picking up yardage and bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Again, it's Cousins. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This just a 24-yard attempt. Joseph's got it, and that will tie us at 3-3. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. So still a little bit of time following the made field goal, but we are tied as the kick's away.
So we've reached halftime in a low scoring affair. Just a pair of field goals. 3-3 is our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Not too much to show you scoring-wise in that first half. Just a couple of field goals make up all the scoring. But I wouldn't be surprised if we're close to a breakthrough and things should open up as we move along. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Second half ready to roll. Two field goals, a combined output in half number one. Could be first touchdown wins. This taken in right around the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. First down. Here's Cousins. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. Oh, my goodness. Was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> oh, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. Second down, Cousins. This is Alexander Madison out of the backfield with it. So just three yards on the completion there. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, short tackle. This goes out wide for Madison. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. And here's Ryan right now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Returnable here from the 38. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defense is right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And this will be a Falcons first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Back to Robinson now on first down. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Now a second and two. Oh, 
Off the play fake, it's Ritter. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Robinson up the middle. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. And that's why he spent a first-round draft pick on a running back. Not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third and ones, third and twos. That's why you draft him. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. They'll run again here with Robinson. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 55 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. Ritter on first and 10. And this will be well too low for him to bring in. It's incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Atlanta, Georgia's the spot, and glad to have you along for the ride. Third quarter action, second and ten. Ritter with it after the play fake. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the ten to the seven. Sets him up nicely, first and goal. It was a pickup of 14. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. They'll run with Robinson. With Way into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Bijan Robinson taking it in from seven yards away. And the Falcons have moved out in front here in the final minute of the third quarter. Sometimes you get a first and goal and you're back near the seven, eight, nine yard line and you start thinking, maybe we're running here on first down to get half of what we need so maybe we can have two or three shots at going for it from closer range. So this is a bonus right here. What a great run to work his way into the end zone. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And the lead is now 10-3. to three. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And really, Charles, not much of a surprise that they're losing. They just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game. And as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. You're exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, they've got to find some type of a play, multiple plays, that puts the ball in the air and allows for them to have some success. And pass the 40 before he's out of bounds. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. Cousins now to throw on first down. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. 
Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. They'll go Madison up the middle. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Three quarters have come and gone. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. Cousins now from the 50. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he will have a Vikings first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. On first and ten, Cousins. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. Will go down as a gain of six. And it'll be second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Now a give to Madison. And that one opened up for him well as he'll take this down to the 26-yard line. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the past. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Cousins. And the throw here caught by Addison. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. Throwing his cousins. Oh, and that is incomplete. Well, I think we were both wondering if we were going to see them try to push it deep downfield, facing a one possession deficit late, and they certainly didn't disappoint. They gave it an effort. Who wants it more? This is fourth and a yard. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. So the failure to convert no doubt really hurts, but this one's not over. A good chunk of time on the clock and the timeouts. Yeah, not only do they have the timeouts, as you just noted, they're going to get an extra one with the two-minute warning, and that's going to help them big way. So in a sense, they have four timeouts in their pocket. The big thing, stopping them on defense now. They can't let them get a first down and make them use their timeouts and get a fresh set of downs. They've got to stop them right here, and if so, they've still got an opportunity. First down, here's Ritter. Targeting picks on the out route, and he's got it complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. A give left side to Robinson. And this will be a Falcons first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. And now right out of the two-minute break, 
We'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Let's go, baby. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Robinson with another carry. Taken down at the 42. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Third and three. On the give, here's Robinson. And he is going to have a Falcons first down. And it would appear that that's going to be the one to do it. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Down to an ego's Ritter, and that should be enough to finish this one off. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You I, like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. <laughs> I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the line room it certainly worked it certainly did and you're exactly right whether it was an adjustment whether it was just more focus on what they plan to do going in whether they just played better whatever it was it all came together in the second half and no points were allowed that's a great way to close them out